Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a few tips for mixing and processing audio in Unity in real time, including using mixer groups and using audio effects. Let's check it out. All right, so welcome back to the Thousand Ant YouTube channel where we give you Unity tutorials devlogs, and general game dev tips and advice from experienced indie game developers. In this video, I want to take a look at using some of the audio features in Unity that allow us to do mixing and effects processing in real time. So I feel like these are some of the features that not everybody knows about in general in games and in film and in a lot of industries, basically besides music, Audio is always a little bit of a stepchild, right, that gets kind of ignored and doesn't really get resources allocated to it. But honestly, it's a kind of a cheap and not that difficult way to add some really nice production value and polish to your project to make things feel alive and rich without spending a ton of time and money. So here, I'm gonna show you guys a few little things that I did on my untitled cute space game last night which are basically just routing some sounds through mixer groups, using some sends and returns, and some reverb and delay to make things sound kind of cool. So let's check it out. So here in Unity, I'll just enter play mode and give you a little demo of what it sounds like. So here we have some music playing in the background. I added in an audio player object. And so what we've got is a random clip looper that has a set of audio clips that it's going to pick between on startup. We can take a look at that in Visual Studio. I feel like this just makes the game feel nicer to have some music in it. It just adds a little bit of atmosphere. So this is literally just like five lines of code. We declare an array of audio clips called music clips. We have a public variable for our audio source, right? So we can play the source and set its clips. In start, we just set the clip of the audio source by picking a random clip from our array using random.range inside musicclips.length, and then we just call audio source.play. So super simple and easy. So here we have the audio source, and what I'm doing here is I'm routing the output of this audio source to a music channel, or as Unity calls it, an audio mixer group in my main mixer. Now, this is a thing I feel like a lot of people don't know about. So here on my audio folder. So what we have here is we have this main mixer asset. Now, this is kind of interesting. I've been doing a lot of content about scriptable objects lately, and I've been using them a lot lately. And actually, this is an example of Unity using this kind of custom asset that you link up in the inspector pattern, right? The audio mixer is actually an asset that is interacted with by the objects in the scene. So the audio source has a reference to the mixer asset, right, which is in the project folder, and then the audio source routes its signal at runtime through the asset, and then the asset modifies the mix and applies effects and so on. So if we look at the main mix, I'll double click it to open it in the audio mixer window. And we can see, let's turn the whole master down here. And hopefully the mix is not too bad with my voice. But basically what we have here is the master is the main output that's going to the audio listener in the scene. We have a sound effects channel, right? And we can hear those sound effects if we click. And let's tell my space robots to mine this asteroid. They might have flown off somewhere. Hopefully they're not too far away. They'll appear in a second. And so what we've got is we've got our master, and then we have the sound effects group, right? So in Unity, mixer channels are referred to as groups. And then we have a music group as well. There they are. There's the robots. All right, so we should hear at some point. They're going to blow up the asteroid. We'll hear an explosion and a little audio sample. Maybe we'll let that happen so we can hear what happens. I'm not talking over it. There we go. And then when I, we drop it off. Carpenter. 
So you can hear it says, you know, cargo delivered. Let's actually turn down the music and we'll keep play mode going. And so you can hear. Now, let's listen to what this sounds like without any of the effects in the mixer. So what we've got is our audio source is going right into the music group and then all the sound effects are being routed into the sound effects group. Now I have a separate mixer for the sound effects. So if we go back to the project and look at the sound effects mix here, we have, right now I only have one channel for them, but as we have more, we'll probably want to route them separately, like actually having the little text-to-speech voice as a separate channel would be good. And so what we're doing is the sound effect player is routing into the sound effects audio mixer, and that is routing into the SFX mixer via the SFX group here. So we can see if we turn it down, we don't hear it, right? And I've also balanced the level here a little bit, which is nice to be able to do, right? So if we look at the sound effects mix, we can see what we're doing here. So we have here the main channel, and then we have two return channels. Now, this is a concept not just from Unity, but from general audio mixing, which is the idea of sends and returns. In Unity, they call them send and receive, and they have them as audio effects, which is a little bit weird if you're an audio person, but basically the effect is the same, right? Let's make a new group by hitting plus. We'll call this test. And then what we'll do is let's take my UI clicks and my space clicks. I'll route them into the test channel just so we can see that working. Now, we could add our reverb and our echo, those kind of space sounds directly to the channel, but adding them to a send or a return means that we can actually use the same effects even at different levels or degrees of wetness across multiple channels, right? So let's take a look at how that works. So if I go into my mix, music is still turned down, good. And that's a nice thing about the fact that these are assets, the audio mixers, is that if you make changes in play mode, they actually persist, right? They don't get reset, which you really want when you're editing audio, because you, you always need to do it in play mode, right? So if we go here, so what we can hear is now, that click is totally dry. That's the UI sound with no effects on it. And you can hear the explosion and the, and the voices. And so what I wanna do is I wanna add some effects to that, but maybe I wanna add it to multiple things, right? So what we're gonna do is, let's see if I can add effects in play mode. I'm gonna go add, and we're gonna add a send. And so this is gonna allow us to route signal to one of these return tracks. I'm gonna to have to exit play mode again. I'll just make a new one for the purposes of teaching here. Let's call this test return. And we'll add to it a receive. And then let's just do another echo. And let's turn up the decay. Let's turn the delay time down. The dry mix on this should be all the way down because we don't actually wanna hear the dry signal. We only wanna hear the affected signal, right? Because it's a return. So what we'll do now is let's go back into play mode. And now I need to unnest these. By accident, I made that nested, which was gonna cause a feedback loop, which could have been very bad. So that's a helpful warning there actually, because we want our return track to be routed directly into the master, not back into the test track itself. So that's a good little teachable moment there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our send we're gonna assign it to test return receive, and we're gonna turn up the send level. This is where we control how much volume from the main track, the dry signal, is going into the wet signal, right? So let's turn it up quite a bit. And now the receive, we don't need to do anything. The receive will just receive it. Oh, it added a high pass for me. Okay, thanks, that's nice. Uh, high pass just cuts off low frequencies. Anything below 1,000 is gonna get cut off. It's interesting that it added that. And so test is routing to this receive with some volume. And so now when we go into play mode, okay, so we can see it's reaching 
we're just not getting a lot of effect back. So let's look at the echo. The dry mix is down. Let's make the delay longer and the feedback longer. There we go. Right, this is a really high decay. The decay is basically the number of repetitions we'll have, aka feedback. So we make it shorter. Play with the time. Really long. Or like a little short metallic kind of effect. Okay, so now let's say I wanted to add a little bit of signal from my reverb track to this as well. I don't want to move the effects, I just want to add some reverb to this also, right? Now all I need to do on my test return is add another send, set the receive to be my reverb return receive, and turn up the volume, and I can actually do this in play mode. We've got that nice reverb, I'll turn it up really loud we can hear that nice effect being applied. So what we can see by routing our audio in this way using sends and receives, right, we can get a lot of flexibility, right? So I can add some reverb. I could add, let's say I wanted to have less reverb on this one thing. Well, I could do that just using the send level. Let's turn it down quite a bit. So we have a little, or if we want a lot, right, very nice. So. Just by using some sends and returns, using some mixer groups, we can really start to get our mix under control. And I really feel like having some of these dynamic effects that are applied to all the sounds gives the whole mix of the game a little bit of a more unified and nice feeling. So I was just kind of playing around with this last night, having fun. I thought it might be a cool topic to address for you all. Funnily enough, if you go back and look for the original YouTube tutorials on the official Unity channel about these features, I actually made those. Those were the first tutorials I made when I got hired by Unity five and a half years ago. So it's definitely time for us to readdress these, right? Because I don't think anybody has been making content about them for about five and a half years. And it's a great feature that can add a lot to your game, right? So hopefully you guys find that useful and cool. If you have a question about the audio system or anything related, please do drop a comment down below if you have any ideas about how you might use this in your own game. I'm always super interested to hear that from you all. And drop a like on the video to help us get discovered by the YouTube algorithm. And if you're enjoying the content, please do consider subscribing. Smash that bell icon to receive notifications when we post new videos. And as always, I really appreciate you guys spending a little bit of your time with me. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.